Anything you'd like to add before we read? Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to read this, Steve. Okay. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Dolly Parton. Are you a fan of down home fun and big titty action? Then join me this Christmas in the Smoky Mountains. There's snow on the ground, but that won't stop me from prancing around in a skimpy nightgown in front of children with my titties half out. The kids are stringing popcorn for the tree, and I'm fixing to dazzle the locals with my breathtaking cleavage. Also, I battle a witch? Would it surprise you to learn I wrote this movie on my own self? Louise Company. By the way, like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> it helps the algorithm. <laughs> All right. People who really want to have a good time won't come to a slaughterhouse. And we've got entirely too many troublemakers here. Too many uh, 40-year-old adolescents, felons, power drinkers, and trustees of modern chemistry. It's going to change. Be nice. That ain't working. I want you to be nice. That ain't working. And you'll both be nice. <laughs> so much as my uh, wife was a giant. But um, I want you to be nice until it's time to not be nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure that's the way you do it. <laughs> <laughs> the Rees Company. Crack open a tepid Genesee, watch the pictures as they travel through your neighbor's Wi-Fi, and these pictures consist of the Rees Company's Christmas Extravaganza Spectacular. I'm Steve Rees, the bull of American broadcasting, alongside the great Chris Morganti. How are you, Chris? I'm good. Are you excited about the holiday season? As Tom Petty said, it's Christmas all over again. It is, indeed. Yep. And here we are, and uh, we're all very excited, looking forward to things. But, uh, and this week, we, uh, well, here's what we figured. What better way to celebrate the holiday season than first checking in with Pittsburgh's forgotten son, Ralph Williams. Sure. So here we have a clip, Chris. Um, this comes from this very week. It's from his YouTube show called The Way I See It mm -hmm. with Ralph Williams. Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, it turns out an unnamed publication. Now, this publication, I'm sure, has a name, but Ralph doesn't bother to reveal it. Some outlet has ranked Pittsburgh's best Italian restaurants. Now, Chris, do you think Ralph is best pleased or not best pleased with the establishment that topped the list? Well, I would guess he's not pleased. But I, I, what, what is the logic behind not naming the publication? Well, he's an idiot. Yeah, okay. He Fair thinks enough. he's a broadcaster, but he doesn't incorporate important yeah. details, right. germane right. details to uh, things that he's uh, trying to tell the folks. Yeah, there's no reason, no logic behind not... Naming the publication that you're quoting from. None at all. Not, it's, it's just unconscientious. Right. Let me ask you this. Do you think maybe Ralph once had a run-in with the staff at the number one Italian restaurant? Oh, boy. I'm guessing maybe they didn't have a ramp to the uh, front door either. Well, let's, that's a problem. Let's find out together, shall we? They came out with something called the seven best old, you know, older type of Italian restaurants in Pittsburgh. And the one, the one that I have a problem with is this Dia Noyas down there in uh, the Strip District. Now, in case you're not aware, I'm handicapped. A lot of you know I'm in a wheelchair. And my mom and I, after church one day, decided that we would go down to Dia Noyas and uh, decided we would try to go in and have lunch. Now, they closed at 3 o'clock. Now, it's 2 o'clock. And they, I guess they closed the kitchen an hour early. So instead of saying to me, look, Mr. Williams, we'll try to help you out. They said they would give me drinks. I said, first of all, I can't, I don't drink. That's the Pause. first. Pause. Instead of changing our policy. Yeah, I don't, I mean, a lot of places, they say they're open to a certain time. It doesn't mean you can just show up right at that time and get served. Right. You know, I, right. an hour seems a bit, I would be a, lit, a bit annoyed too as well, you know, but uh, it's not that big of a deal. But uh, what the manager did, uh, did the worst thing you can do to Ralph Williams, offer him a drink. Oh, yeah. We, he you doesn't know how like ignorant that. that behavior is yeah, when someone ignorant. says, you want something to drink? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Well, wait do you hear his impression of this cat. Uh, let's continue. Thank you. Okay. Then I says to them, well, 
I says, uh, I really want to get some lunch here. Oh, the kitchen's closed. I said, okay, fine, then we're going to have an ad at the kitchen's closed. Okay, well, they're rated number one in uh, <laughs> some publications here for one of the best Italian, old-fashioned Italian restaurants in Pittsburgh. Yeah, now, again, whether or not he's in a wheelchair or he's handicapped, it has nothing to do with the kitchen being open or being closed. Well, if they're ranked number one in, I mean, Pittsburgh's a pretty big city. If you're, if you're ranked number one in a city of that size, you should probably make reservations if you plan on going there. <laughs> right. There's yeah. a, probably a table is a, a high-class ticket, a high-ticket item. Right. <clears throat> But this story, this anecdote, whatever you want to call it, this uh, gripe, proves once again that he expects his demands to be met in any situation because he's handicapped, simply because of his physical misfortune, regardless of the relevance of his request to his handicap. Yeah, you're right. I didn't even pick up on that. But the fact that he mentioned he's handicapped, that has nothing to do with this That's story. That's how he prefaced this whole story. It has nothing to do with it. Yeah. Yeah. Man, oh, man. And, again, the manager of the place does sound suspiciously like the woman who said, you want something to drink? Yeah. But also the security guard at what he calls uh, Progi Fest. Right. Who, uh, who said, we open at 430. Yeah. He the- has one impression, and they're all the same impression that Trump did of that reporter. <laughs> they're all very similar. River he said, ah, I, I, I forgot exactly what Trump said. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they're all very similar to uh, Trump's impression of the New York Times reporter. So, uh, our movie of the week of the week. Shall we go straight into this? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, let's hit the intro. Okay, our movie of the week of the week is A uh, what, Smoky Mountain Christmas. Yeah. Well, what happened to the thing? We added a thing last week. Uh, oh, we did. I, I guess that has to be in post. And, and I do have a concern. I'm, I, what we see on the left is not the program. What we see on the right is the preview? Okay. All right. So, uh, A Smoky Mountain Christmas aired, aired on December 14th, 1986. Mm. On the American Broadcasting Company. Now, Dolly Parton. Dolly Parton. Yeah, she stars in this. Well, let me tell you something about Dolly Parton, Steve. Yeah? Uh, She's got big, giant boobs. Indeed, yeah? Yeah. Um, Continue. Okay, and uh, not only that, uh, by this time, she had established herself as a major uh, box office and uh, also record sales superstar. I'm being told something right now. Is this possible? I I understand, Chris, that Ralph Williams has something he would like to add. Oh. Ralph? This. Dolly Parton's being sued by somebody because she put out some kind of CBT uh, line of um, products, CBT products. That's those cannabis. Okay. Okay, pause. And apparently. Pause. He says CBT because yeah. he confuses T with D. He says it when he talks about uh, COVID-19. He says, oh, they did that because of covid COVID? Yeah, he has a problem uh, discerning the difference between T and D. Oh, I've heard about that problem. It's called stupidity. Yes. Yeah. Yes. He's afflicted. <laughs> Indeed. <clears throat> All right. Uh, let, let's hear uh, what, what more about Dolly Parton, Ralph? She copycatted or did something with the name of someone else's stuff and marketed it and didn't give that person no money. Now, you would think Dolly Parton wouldn't do that. Dolly Parton's the innocent woman who I saw in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, who at 72 years old can still sing. Okay? And she has great hits, and she has great Christmas music. And this is what Dolly Parton does. You know, it's all about money and business. Yeah, now I know that Dolly Parton is a titan of entertainment. I have no idea what he just said. <laughs> if, you, if you don't give somebody no money, does that mean you gave him money? I'm, I'm so confused. Grammatically, it does. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. what, what is he, who's suing who? Is she getting sued, being sued, suing someone? I don't know what's going on. Here's the problem, Chris. Dolly Parton is a powerful woman. Right. Undeniably. 
And perhaps in this case, she used that power to have this story wiped from the public record. Because I could find reportage on no such lawsuit. Uh, now, there are, of course, two other possibilities. Yeah, yeah, I can think of. I have yeah. very poor research skills. Uh, or Ralph sees or reads a news item, and it just goes in the wrong way. Yeah, or it's totally fake, something he read on Facebook and is not real. You know? Right, right. Now, I did, I did do an internet, an internet search all over the internet for any lawsuit involving... Dolly Parton and CBD products. And this is the closest, most recent item I can uncover. Can we put this article up? And Chris, if you don't mind reading the uh, headline and the highlighted parts over here. Oh, this, this headline right here? Yeah. Police officer who sued force after colleague called him Dolly Parton because he only worked nine to five loses sex harassment claim. Yeah, now the headline is misleading. It, it suggests that he was accused of wrongdoing, but he was actually the one alleging the wrongdoing. Yeah, sure, I got that. Okay, continue. Oh, what am I reading here? This part? Uh, yeah, yeah, start at the uh, top there. A police officer who sued his force... There's a typo in this. Where does this come from? <laughs> it's a, it's a, I think it was a, All right, let me start over. This is a typo. Uh, okay. All right. All right. A police officer who sued his force after a colleague called him Dolly Parton because he only worked nine to five has lost a sex harassment claim. PC Stephen Knox of Merseyside Police claimed after the officer covered his desk in 8x11 photographs of the country singer and continually whistled her hit song at their station. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like a fun place to work. Uh, very lighthearted. Not a lot of crime going on in Liverpool, apparently. <laughs> <Yeah>. <clears throat> An employment tribunal heard PC Knox, a father of four, worked a specific 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. schedule to suit his child care needs and to provide daily care for his elderly and disabled mother following the death of his father. Understandably accommodating. The long-serving officer, who had an unblemished record from... They put unblemished in quotation marks. <laughs> so, was it really? <laughs> it's possible they were, they were quoting somebody. Yeah, I guess. Saying his record was unblemished. I guess, yeah. He had an unblemished record for more than 13 years, took his force to a tribunal following the, again, banter by his colleague, named only as P.C. Rylands at the hearing. No, that's, that's his name. Like, named only, like, that's not a pseudonym. He's P.C. Rylands. <laughs> Who wrote this? Who wrote this? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, our movie of the week of the week. Sorry we got sidetracked there. But so, it's so just, to, just to be clear, um, he lost the... He, he filed a sexual harassment claim for being called Dolly Parton and lost that claim. Yes. Yeah, that's not sexual harassment. That's just lighthearted workplace. Yeah, or or as they fun said, banter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So our movie of the week of the week is A Smoky Mountain Christmas, 1986, ABC stars Dolly Parton, Lee Majors. Dolly Parton? Yes. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Lee Majors gets second billing, and that's probably because of his status at the time. He had just completed two back-to-back -back hit series, Six Million Dollar Man, followed by The Fall Guy. Right. And uh, The Fall Guy ended its run just months before this film premiered. So he was still riding high. Although, career-wise, he was about to go from Lee Majors to Lee American Association. And that line was the only reason for these last 30 seconds of airtime. A joke lost on me. Henry Winkler. TV's The Fonz. He directed this? His directorial debut, indeed. Yeah. And it's also worth noting that uh, A Smoky Mountain Christmas was co-written by Dolly herself. Mm -hmm. Keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. uh, in it, she plays a Dolly Parton type, a superstar country artist from the Great Smoky Mountains. And she grows weary of the fast-paced world of Hollywood and skips town surreptitiously. She borrows a truck and heads back to Tennessee, where she's arranged to borrow a, uh, a, disu a disused cabin from an unseen childhood friend. And we'll see that cabin in a bit. But let's take a look at her final moment in her L.A. home. I'm sorry, Vernon. What 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 I miss here? What I miss, Steve? What just happened? Who is she apologizing to? The window? No, she's apologizing to Vernon. Vernon is her butler. I really? 
Yeah. I to- I mean, I watched this over a, the course of several nights. I guess I forgot all about that. She had a butler. Yes. Okay. And, and we're about to see him. Maybe it'll jog her memory. And I guess she apologizes to him because she feels guilty about running out on him without warning. It seemed like she was alone in that room. No, she was. She wasn't talking to him. Okay. Oh, yeah. He, has, he had an English... He's an English guy. Yeah, she was talking to herself. Yeah, I remember now. Saying, oh, yeah. I feel bad that Vernon's going to have to deal with this or whatever. So um, <clears throat> here, Vernon, we see him talking to law enforcement who show up to the house to investigate. Madam retired at 9 o'clock. No, no, it's 9.30. There were no visitors before or after. And Can you excuse us, please? Why, of course, yes. I'll be around if you need me. Thank you, thank you. We found a car abandoned at La Brea and Rodeo. The kidnappers must have switched vehicles and then taken off. There were no witnesses. As usual, everybody went blind for 10 minutes. Is this on the wire yet? Yeah, the kidnappers, Chris. Well, it was a broken window. Oh, that's why they broke. I get it. All right. So they, they show a broken window to make them think that she was kidnapped. I, I understand now. Yeah, so they're treating this as an, as an abduction. But right, you mentioned right. the broken window. The glass door was broken from the inside and shattered outward. Yeah. So any criminal investigator would be leaning toward this being a hoax. Yeah. I, I or a staged incident. Didn't the same thing happen in the OJ case? <laughs> <laughs> there was some high profile case where the window was in the wrong. Yeah. Whatever. Po- possibly. Yeah. But it's not her fault because Dolly Parton is just probably not too familiar with the legal system, regardless of what Ralph Williams yells <laughs> into his quick cam. <laughs> so by this time, Dolly Parton has arrived in Tennessee. And she has settled into the secluded cabin. She falls asleep. And she's discovered by a group of kids. And here's where that written by Dolly Parton co-credit really makes itself known. Oh, boy. Look. Jake, what's going on? Where is she? Do you think she came from the children's home? Whoever she is, she's got to get out of here. Should we wake her? I don't know. She's beautiful. She sure is. Yeah. In the opening voiceover, she she refers to herself as a princess. Uh, later on, she refers to herself as the best mother in the world. Okay. And then as this scene continues, in between compliments she, she's on not, looks, She doesn't even play a mother in this film. No, no. But that's the best mother in the world. Okay. All right. <laughs> so this scene continues, and the kids continue to compliment her on her looks. And one kid <laughs> makes a lot of out-of-place and repeated insults directed at Porter Wagoner. We learn something about these kids, though, in the process. It's implied, but not yet spelled out, that they're a group of orphan runaways escapees yeah. from a nearby uh, children's home that's run by a couple of tyrants. So these kids have taken up refuge in this cabin. Who, they, now, is it her cabin? No, it's a friend of hers. Oh, okay. All right. Um, I just wanted to know. Okay. They claim to be the children of parents who are simply out of town. Sure. Even though one of them is African-American. Yes. Yeah. Well, no, I don't think they claim to be siblings, just that they're gotcha. all of their parents happen to be out of town for, uh, I guess, business. So Dolly recognizes the common goal of not being noticed. Yeah, yeah you know, those people who uh, live in a shack in the Smoky Mountains who travel internationally for business. That, that, sort, of, that sort of thing. Yeah. Nice cover story, kids. <laughs> so Dolly makes a deal with these children. She makes a proposal. Let's hear this. Now, kids, I happen to know for a fact you're telling me a fib. See, I used to live over the hill here in the next holler. So if anybody's out calling the police, it ought to be me. <laughs> no, 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 please don't. Don't worry, don't worry. I'm not going to do that. See, we got something in common. Neither of us want to be found out. So I'm going to make a deal with you. I won't tell anybody you're here if you won't tell anybody I'm here. But that's just till after Christmas. Then after that, you got to tell me the truth, and then we'll figure something out. Deal? Yeah. What quiet, quiet Christmas mountain getaway wouldn't be improved by the sudden presence of seven children? <laughs> also, that story she's trying to sell them is exactly what every pedophile tells their victim. Right. Even Jimmy Savile would have said, uh, okay, this was great for about an hour. <laughs> but do you nerds ever settle down? <laughs> 
But Dolly really leans in here, which blocks the sun in seven states, and she embraces the motherly role to these orphans. So here she is offering counsel to the eldest runaway, which also serves as an introduction to a musical number. Oh, great. Here we go. What's your problem, Jake? I don't have a problem. You make deals, you make promises, you get them to like you, you make them believe that you're going to stay forever. You know you're going to up and leave because everybody does. Now, that's mighty old talk for such a young man, ain't it? Our mama did. So don't go make him believe you're going to be any different. Jake. Oh, come on, Jake. It could have been better, but it could have been a lot worse. When everybody has hard times, everybody hurts. Hmm. See, now, <laughs> right here, I assume we're going to go into an REM song. Right. right. Unfortunately, <laughs> no. <laughs> right. She set that up perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The uh, classic R.E.M. ballad was not yet written, and Dolly was not about to write it. No. Now, I don't want to hype this too much, but there is one legitimately amusing joke in this film. One of the kids runs a fever, and Dolly, posing as the child's mother, picks her up and takes her to town. That's what you do. You pick it up, you take it to town. (laughs) Sure. Yeah. And uh, to visit the nearest doctor. She's got a fever, bad cold. Change her feet. Change her feet. That's good advice. Where'd you boys get so smart? 4-H. 4-H. What's the matter with your duck? Oh, she's not been happy lately. Nothing worse than an unhappy duck. <laughs> I guess not. And the goat? Oh, there's nothing the matter with my goat. I got an earache. It's, it's amusing. I'll grant you that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, for all we know, that was from a hee-haw sketch. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, not bad at all. Now, there are other characters who are running through every thread of this film whose who's, uh, scenes we haven't shared. Uh, there's the sheriff who's in pursuit of the runaway kids. And in typical TV movie fashion, he has an election coming up. Yeah. And he's determined to make a big arrest that will translate into votes. And as we've established on a previous episode... No one goes to the polls with an opinion on who should or shouldn't be sheriff. I, I don't recall ever seeing that on the ballot. No, but you voted for the sheriff. Probably. Yes. I, I you just pull a, random, uh, pull a random lever because it's there. I mean, I haven't voted in over 20 years, so. <laughs> <clears throat> but in his mind, he'll make a big splash at the polls by rounding up children and returning them to their abusers. Well, I mean, if you are running for sheriff, I think uh, finding some missing kids probably would help your case, to be fair. Yes, but also yeah. if you're a sheriff, shutting down the orphanage where children are <laughs> abused on a daily basis. Yeah, you know. That might that might uh, bode better. Well, six of one and a half dozen of the other. Uh, <clears throat> All right. So the sheriff and a deputy, uh, they're at a bar and a witch walks in. Sure. Why now, not? I'm not, and immediately approaches Chris Morganti. I don't know. It's a, <laughs> hey, now. I didn't know you were this. Well, see, <laughs> folks have never been to a bar with Chris, but uh, <laughs> you go into a bar with, a, with Chris, immediately the craziest gal will approach him. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to say anything. You might get me in some trouble here. Steve. Oh, no, no, no. Not, not, <laughs> I, I don't mean women you've dated. Not anyone you've I'm with it. currently, certainly. Yes. No, 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 no. But you, <laughs> you are a magnet for sure. the craziest person in an establishment where alcohol is served. Right. Yeah. Moving on. Is that wrong? <laughs> no, you're not wrong. Okay. No, you're not wrong. All right. We can cut that out if that's No, no, it's fine. A problem. It's fine. All right. <clears throat> so... The sheriff has a a kind of a vague relationship with this witch. I don't know if she has a desired or actual relationship with him. Okay. But she's very envious of him. Well, yeah, she wants to be, I guess, his girlfriend because when Dolly Parton first drives into town, he pulls her over for, I don't know, speeding? I don't know. But um, the witch appears and, and is like, what are, why are you talking to her? Yeah, she yeah. basically gives him a warning, you know, stay away from that woman. Right. And he runs into her again just in uh, by circumstance. And then that becomes a problem because the witch finds out about it. So uh, here she shows up at this bar and this occurs. Oh, 
Okay. Very limited magical powers. Yeah. Are we going to see the spell she cast at the end with the pie? Uh, we are going. We are going to see the pie okay, because good. I'm very, very curious. We're not going to see all of it. We're going to see some of the pie. Yeah. Because uh, <laughs> I'm, not, yeah. I'm not sure how much of a did she go to the? Uh, did she just have? A, does she have an associate's degree in witchery? Yeah. Let's. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about it when we get there. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah, I, okay. I have a theory. Okay. <clears throat> so we're almost halfway through when second build Lee Majors finally bothers to turn up. Now he plays a guy the kids call Mountain Dan. Right. And he's sort of a Boo Radley type, mm. at least as far as the kids are concerned. He's rumored to have a rattlesnake for a whip, and he dines on the corpses of children. And by the way, one goal I think everyone should have, I think this is a good thing to focus on in life, is uh, never to become the person in town for whom the neighborhood kids, they, they've crafted a gruesome and colorful backstory. <laughs> You don't want to be that guy. No. If you have one success in life, let that be it. <laughs> well, Dolly encounters Mountain Dan after uh, the witch tries to lure her off a cliff. So Dan appears and pulls Dolly to safety at the last second. Yeah. And after conferring by a, by a campfire, Dan takes Dolly back to her cabin. Let's see this. He's going to start putting the fire out. You know, I've been keeping an eye on those kids for about six months now. I'd hate to see him go back to the children's home. So that's it. I figured it was something like that. Oh, I hate to think what's going to happen to him after... Well, after what? Oh, nothing. How about coming to meet him tomorrow? We're going to decorate the cabin for Christmas. Oh. Thanks, ma'am, but no thanks. I mean, I haven't been around people in so long, I wouldn't know how to act. Oh, don't... Well, you've come to the right movie. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Dan does return to visit Dolly and uh, meet the children. Of course, they're terrified at first, but they quickly warm up to him. Okay. Uh, and as Christmas approaches, the kids get antsy about their future. They're hoping that when Dolly returns home, she'll take them with her. Of course, that's legally dubious, so she warns them against getting too set on that as a likelihood. A photo. I know we weren't supposed to talk about it till after Christmas, but, but we can see it like us a lot. So we all voted now, to stay with it? you. That, uh, maybe that's not even the right kid, but the kid on the right side of the screen there. Yeah. Was he in different strokes? Oh, I don't know. Possibly. The, uh, but this was 1986. He would have had to have been. Yeah, that would have been about the right time. See, when uh, who, uh, Gary Coleman, right? He was the, the little kid on the show. But then even at his short stature, he started to age a little bit by the end of the show. So they brought in a little redheaded kid, and they had they had Mr. Drummond dating his uh, mom, you know. Uh, I believe that's the same kid. I don't know. All right. Even Jake. Oh, I do like you a lot, but it's just not that easy. See, judges decide on things like that. Come on. The judge will be able to see that we were meant to be together. And you said your house was real big. So if we can't stay here, then we'll, we'll go, go with you. Yeah. Oh, there's nothing in this world I want more than for us to be together. Well, I think about that all the time myself. I just don't want us to get our hopes up too high, that's all. I knew it. I knew you'd make excuses. what I tell you? She don't want to stay around here with us. Oh, now, Jake, come on. You know that's not true. You know something? You were great at making us believe you were going to stick around. Please, Jake. Oh, boy. Now we're all going <laughs> to die. <laughs> Actually, Jesse just decides to go hunting. Yeah. They're, and, they're reading squirrel, sco squirrel stew when she showed up. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's uh, providing for the family. So while Jesse's out hunting, the sheriff and his deputies show up. They arrest Dolly and round up all the other kids. And that night, the kids are taken back to the dreaded children's home. Mm -hmm. And Dolly sits in the jail cell. Meantime, the witch bakes Dolly a poison pie. She bakes it herself. Let's see.
Yeah, all right, you get the general idea. Yeah. Um, do you need witchcraft in order to make a pie that's going to put someone to sleep? <laughs> because that's the purpose of this, is to knock Dolly Parton out. Right, right. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, I mean, Ambien and fentanyl wouldn't, <laughs> is that the extent of her witchcraft? I, I don't, I don't know. <clears throat> but also if I had magical powers, I'd probably use them to cut down on domestic chores. <laughs> sure. Maybe she just yeah. finds the process therapeutic. Yeah, uh, I don't, I don't can. know what it is, but, uh, yeah. I don't know. So Dolly eats the poison pie. Mountain Dan revives her with a kiss. Dolly then tricks the witch into eating the pie herself. Oh, you skipped over the part where they break her out of jail with a horse. Yes, yeah, so they they pull the wall off the side of the jail, which I, I guess is um, it's it looks like brick, but I think it might be Lego. Yeah, Lego. Yeah. If you ask me, uh, what horsepower you would need to pull down a jail cell wall, uh, my guess would have been more than one, <laughs> but apparently not. Yeah, they bust her out of jail, and um, Jesse, the older kid. Uh, <clears throat> he, Mountain Dan, and a paparazzo we haven't shown you. Uh, he's stalking Dolly early in the film, but then he does a face turn. Sure. And actually yeah. helps things uh, evolve and get her out of jail, get the kids freed from the orphanage. He's played by Dan Hedaya, or Hedaya. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. No. But most folks would recognize him from practically everything, but also Nick Tortelli on Cheers. Oh, okay. Yeah, wow, really? Yeah. He looks a lot different here. So uh, that trio, they break Dolly out of the county jail and the kids out of the orphanage. Now, a judge played by John Ritter, who, let's face it, some people are so stupid. Now, not talking about you, but some people clicked on our channel expecting to see John Ritter. Well, guess what, Chris? We're not even going to show him. Learn to read. So Dolly appears in Judge John Ritter's court alongside Mountain Dan who, as it turns out, is an attorney who fled city life for something simpler. Mm. Yeah, he, that adds up. Yeah, you know, something simpler. Right. Like, uh, something simpler that requires you to uh, build your own housing and hunt down every meal. Man, Chris, some people really hate the subway. Yeah. And subway. Maybe he was just a really bad lawyer. <laughs> So John Ritter grants Dolly legal custody of the children and everybody goes home. Anything you'd like to add before we read? Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to read this, Steve. Okay. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Dolly Parton. Are you a fan of down-home fun and big-titty action? Then join me this Christmas in the Smoky Mountains. There's snow on the ground, but that won't stop me from prancing around in a skimpy nightgown in front of children with my titties half out. The kids are stringing popcorn for the tree, and I'm fixing to dazzle the locals with my breathtaking cleavage. Also, I battle a witch? Would it surprise you to learn I wrote this movie on my own self? I believe she used that as the... Uh, that, that was the promo, the network yeah, promo? Yeah, the network promo. Yeah, that, that was the ad copy from the original network promo. I saw her... I saw a clip of her on Johnny Carson in an elf costume promoting this movie. <laughs> How was that? Did she reveal anything about uh, the movie? That no, she talked about herself. Way. Surprisingly, oh. <laughs> she, she talked about herself. Well, there's something I like to say. What we do here is not scholarly criticism. Oh, really? That thing I just did. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, we're, we're just a couple of dorks mincing about before the cameras. Um, but we at least like to review films in good faith, and for us, that mostly means. Sticking the projects that were made with us in mind as potential audience members, where we're in the demographic. Right. Which is not the case here. N not with this. This is yeah. more of a family film. And traditionally... Really? Mm, a lot of cleavage for a family film. Uh, that was kind of the whole point of what I just said. No, I, I, I understand that. But it was conceived as a family film. Would sure. you disagree? Well, who else would watch it? Yeah. But when you hear the term family film... There are three audience uh, segments in mind, right? Okay. You have uh, young people, children, basically. Yeah. You have um, the elderly with delicate sensibilities. And then you have people our age who don't like any of this, but just pretend to, to court a wholesome public image. So you throw some Dolly Parton titties in there to make them happy. Well, I don't know what the strategy is there. I mean, uh, because uh, you put Dolly Parton in anything, she's going to have the body she has. It's not... 
Yeah. Fair, fair enough. All I'm saying is we don't fit into any of these categories. So I'd like folks to keep this in mind when we rate this film. So out of five Meredith Baxters, Chris, what do you give a Smoky Mountain Christmas? Um, uh, what did I give the movie where Tiffany Amber Thiessen was showing her boobs? I, I, I don't a, know. a three? Possibly I'll, a three. I'll three give this sounds a, good. I'll give that this sounds, a two then. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to give it two as well. I, I think it's best to judge a Christmas film on whether you can imagine people viewing it as an annual tradition. Okay. I can see people watching this twice in their lifetime, but then being over it, especially when there are so many other films, especially of this kind, that have greater rewatchability. Sure. Yeah. It's not even really that Christmassy. You know, no, it just happens to take place over the Christmas season. Yeah, and there is a part where somebody's dressed up like Santa. I believe it was Lee Majors, right? Uh, and there's a sleigh, but that's that's a ruse, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's a, there's a very little Christmas stuff about it, and uh, I don't see. Yeah, I don't see. Uh, you, well, you told me that um, this was out of print, right? Yes, it's not available on DVD. Yeah, so there you go. Or Blu-ray. Nobody's watching it. <laughs> all right well in that case chris is there anything we didn't talk about you might like to talk about oh i don't know do we have any any we should have had like some eggnog or something here this week all right well and we are very fortunate because the genesee brewery has been kind enough to uh just for our show yeah. they've uh packaged cream ale in black cans for us and we appreciate that yeah it's so, very uh, nice of them you yeah. actually you can't get these in the shops no that, yeah. they only send these to us this is a Rees Company exclusive, and we're grateful that uh, they've gone out of their way to show their appreciation for their, uh, all we've done for them over the years. And let's let's be honest, they've done a lot for us just uh, by entertaining us with their product. Yes. We have heard rumors of a potential beer sponsorship in the works. In addition to another beer we were talking about just a few weeks ago, which now I don't know what to do with because I, I'm, I, I'm hearing things. I don't know. Okay. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, but you don't want to say too much. Right. So we don't really know what's going on, but hopefully we'll have a, a beer sponsor. Hopefully, it's, well, I, see, I can't, I can't say. I don't know what to say. No, you're fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't worry about don't worry about. I don't want to say the wrong thing here of, and screw no, something up not, for you're anybody. Not, you're not going to lose. So, you're not going to lose this. I'm gonna I can up. guarantee you that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, in that case, Chris, I think we did it. All right. We'll see you folks in 2023, the year of the Rees Company. Really? There's yeah. not another show this year? I don't think so. Oh, we're going to record another show this year, but it won't be out until uh, 2023. We're going to, uh, yeah, I, I guess maybe we are. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. All right. All right. Well, in that case, uh, we did it. Thanks so much. Uh, Jim Corian, Chris Morgetti. I'm Steve Reese. Oscar Wee Wee. We're not supposed to say his last name, you know. Holy Mackinac. Right. We did it, sir. So.